Hey what's up guys my name is Pedro and welcome to another video on my channel. So today I'm going to be taking you through the process I use while drawing tyrannosaurs and other theropod carnivorous dinosaurs. As a reference I'm going to be using Scott Hartman's skeletal reference of a specimen called Sue. I'll provide a link to Scott's website where you can find all of his amazing artwork. One of the most important things when drawing dinosaurs or any animal is knowing the anatomy, understanding how things move and change the form under the skin. This is why drawing from life and watching animals is so important, because even though you're not watching Mesozoic dinosaurs, you're watching other animals that have the same parts, and even though they move may move slightly different the, to prehistoric animals, you can kind of get an idea on how real animals work. So first off, I'm going to be turning down the skeleton layer to about 40%. Uh, if you're doing this traditionally, I recommend you pausing the video and lightly drawing the skeleton. So yeah, I'm going to be holding my sketching brush. Uh, if you're doing this um, t tutorial in the drawing format, you can send me the drawings via email, which I'll link down below, and um, or tag me on Instagram, uh, which I'll also provide a link down below. So I'm going to go fa fast right now and draw the the main muscles I think about on a theropod carnivorous dinosaurs. So you shouldn't draw this part still, this is just um, a gnarly, just um, kind of general theropod musculature. So there's a big um, jaw muscle that connects the back of the jaw to about halfway to one third of the way of the, the animal jaw. There's a big, big muscle that uh, comes from the neck to, and connects to the shoulder blade, to the lower part of the shoulder blade, and the back of the animal. And then there's a lot of muscles that connect the, the body to the head. And these muscles are what give you the, the bite force that the animal has. So, as I said, it's not permanent, so please don't draw this and uh, uh, I'm gonna be erasing this layer right now. So now I'm going to uh, create an arrow layer on top, called Muscles again. I'm going to pick a reddish color, kind of mid-tone, and really saturated mid-tone actually. And now I'm going to accurately, accurately uh, um, represent those muscles free. So there's a big jaw muscle that, comes, that connects the back of the jaw to about one third of the way of the, the lower jaw of the animal. It's kind of square shape, it's not a circle you might think. There's muscles inside the fenestry and the the openings of the skull behind the eye. Those are not that important. And I'm gonna be now drawing the, the muscle that connects the lower shoulder blades to the maybe halfway through the animal's neck and the back of the animal. And now there's four main muscles that connect the the body to the head. There's uh, four segments. So there's a top one, a middle one, there's a, a middle inferior one, and the bottom one. There's actually a, uh, this muscle right here that can that's parallel to the the jaw, and there's a more another muscle that's kind of horizontal. Now drawing the the arm muscles, I'm not going to be focusing too much on the arm. 
but it's there, so we might as well do it. The top, the upper arm muscles, and the lower arm muscles. Also the shoulder. So now that the musculature is done, I'm going to be creating a layer on top, picking a smaller size brush, and doing my line work. If you're doing this traditionally, I recommend you kind of white erasing your drawing of the musculature and the, the skeleton, and use a pen or a pencil. Now, when drawing the eye, you have to respect the orbital uh, orbital ring, which I done wrong, so don't copy this eye yet. I'm gonna be erasing it very soon. The eye has to fit in the middle, uh, the inside of the orbital ring, and the pupil has to be round like a bird's. I'm gonna be I'm gonna put in some indication of fold lines there would be created when the eye when the animal winks around people like a bird or like a modern day dinosaur some more skin uh, skin folds and now moving on to the nostril which I'm gonna make a triangle shape which would be uh, moving to, to the front of the animal not to the sides the top of the skull, just putting a little bit of skin on top of it, and the, the nasal ridge will have a, a tiny bit of keratin on top of it, not too much, since it's not that prominent on Tyrannosaurus Rex. Moving on to the orbital ridge, I'm actually going to put a quite a bit of keratin on top of it, just to make it a different color and maybe um, a form of, of attracting and attracting mates. Moving to the tip of the snout, just putting in a little bit of skin and near the, and putting a little bit of cartilage on top of, next to the nostril. Now I'm gonna be doing the skin flap and the, that connects the top jaw to the uh, bottom jaw. And the lips. Most modern day predators have all have lips protecting their teeth from the environment, apart from crocodiles, but crocodiles can regrow their teeth, most, most predators can't. So it's pretty possible to have tyrannosaurs and other carnivores with some kind of protection. So after you put in the teeth, let's move on to that uh, pronounced uh, part um, of the top jaw and put in some skin folds on the skin flap. Now moving on to the bottom jaw, I'm going to put a little bit of soft tissue representing the lips, but the lips will be kind of sideways because the jaw is uh, kind of down, so I'm not going to put as much as I did on the top jaw. As you can see, that part of skin uh, on the tip of the bottom jaw represents the lip.
Now moving on to the uh, back of the jaw, I'm gonna just pull an uh, indication where it would uh, separate from the neck. Uh, you can follow the musculature that you did earlier. And now the tip of the bottom jaw. I'm gonna put a little bit more soft tissue because I'm wanna I'm not gonna connect the two halves because I wanna make a skin flap connecting the neck to to the tip of the bottom jaw. And the reason why I'm doing this is because uh, on Tarbosaurus it's been uh, pretty much confirmed that it would have a, a kind of gut uh, hanging down from the neck. So I'm kind of emulating that it could s serve as a display organ or a gut. Putting in a line that represents the muscle that was parallel to the uh, jaw muscle. Now connecting it to the chest, chest comes up and then falls. I always look, I like to put a little more skin and fat uh, on top of the skeleton, so it's not going to be, um, I'm not going to make it um, near the bones. I'm actually going to do the line work a little bit more. Uh, I could touch it. Um, now moving on to the back of the skull, I actually made a mistake here. I made it too close to the bone, so I'm gonna be erasing it and redoing it. So I'm leaving a, a little bit space between the the, the the bone makes it feel like it has a bit of fat. Now putting in the hero. Here. The top of the animal's neck you can follow, you can basically follow the musculature you've done. Um, just remember to put a layer of soft tissue on top. You can see how our Tyrannosaur is coming along nicely. And I'm gonna be moving on to the arm, I believe. No, actually, I'm gonna be moving on to the skin flaps, the skin folds at the skin under the, the, the animal's neck. Because as the animal is called. As he's moving his neck, is going to mix uh, the the soft tissue is going to overlap and create skin flaps. Think about them as when you close your fingers, you can kind of see the the the, 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 the skin flaps that it makes. Putting in some veins on the neck. Now moving on to the arm, now putting the, the claws and then a little pad. Now notice that on Tyrannosaurus the, the first finger is always shorter than the second finger. In some examples they, that is not as noticeable, like the Spoidosaurus. In Tyrannosaurus you can kind of you can see it well. Now I'm, I'm, I made a little skin flap uh, connecting the, the the lower arm to the upper arm, like birds have.
uh, finishing off the back of the animal. I'm even gonna be correcting some mistakes I've made in the fingers. And putting some folds that indicate the arm uh, moving. Putting some folds on the neck. They also help define the the roundness of his neck of the animal's neck. Now moving on to the air passage, the, the nasal canal, I'm gonna put a little bit of an indentation uh, showing that near the nostril. And now I'm going to be putting some lines that indicate the, the lips swelling up from the big teeth that Tyrannosaurus had. Uh, so those lines uh, would indicate the shape that the teeth would make on the lip as the lip is uh, going against them. And I'm going to put a scar because we have pretty good evidence that Tyrannosaurus fought each other and the bottom jaw as well Now I'm going to put an indentation of the bottom of the nasal ridge and some lines that indicate its shape. And the same goes for the uh, orbital ridge just above the eyes. So these lines serve as details and as a, a way to deform, to describe the shape of your object. So I put some whiskers here, but I actually erased them, I didn't like it too much. This will be sensorial organs, but I have a better idea for that. So I'm going to be putting some beak uh, 
round squarish scales on the snout of the Tyrannosaurus and this appeared in an article on a study um, that came out recently about the, spot the new species of Spotosaurus having these big uh, sensitive scales that would be kind of having the same purpose as, as Crocodile have on the tip of their snout. These were really sensitive and helped the animal fuel its environment. So I'm just going to be filling you in the snout with the scales and the bottom jaw as well. So because I don't want to go into much too much detail on the scales, I'm going to kind of fade, fade them uh, a bit as they get far, farther away from the from where I began putting the scales. There won't be a, a huge amount of detail on the drawing because the transfer scales were actually about five millimeter in diameter which would make their skin kind of look like leather until we got up close. Okay, so here I noticed that they weren't, they wasn't, they weren't uh, fading enough. So I went to to, re, to add some more scales here and there to make them more quiet. There, it's just not a, a place where they end. And obviously, doing the same from the body jaw. So I'm going to be kind of indicating the jaw muscle with those uh, really white lines and adding a bit more fold lines to that part of the mouth. Now adding a bit more uh, detail on around the eye. and start adding detail to the drawing by doing these horizontal and vertical lines that not only help adding this leather-like skin that Tyrannosaurus would have had, but also help to find shape if you can mold them around your object. So as you can see in the jaw, 
the lines uh, are really circular and it makes the, the jaw feel uh, round. And uh, by doing those uh, vertical lines as well helps gain that leather like feel. Now adding some detail to the throat. Not, not too much, just a indentation of scales here and there. And we're actually pretty close to being done. Some more detailing in the veins. Some scales here and there, not too much. Now adding some fold lines behind the heads that would be created when the animal moves his neck and his head sideways. All of these details uh, will make your drawing feel realistic, like a real animal. And that's what you're going for. Now adding some details on the arm muscles. Um, there's the forearm muscles, and the biceps, and the... They're not exactly... I don't think they are called biceps in dinosaurs, but they're still there, so I'm going to be adding them. In addition for your shoulder muscle and the arm muscle. As well, some more fold lines in the belly. And the indentation for the shoulder, because even on fat animals and healthy animals like tigers at the zoo, you can still see their hips and their, their shoulder. Shrink wrap doesn't mean you have no bone showing, it means you have a healthy animal that will be realistic. So, hopefully, you guys enjoyed. I'm gonna be we need a time wipes for faction now.
So if you guys enjoyed, um, leave a like down below, subscribe for more, uh, leave comments from suggestions, and I'll see you guys next time.